everybody. And uh, my name is uh, from Case Western Reserve. Review. And, and uh, it's great encouragement that uh, there's still so many there. And uh, that the beginning of the World Cup final. <laughs> and uh, it seems that my advisor wants to. Doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to introduce another genetic linkage analysis on a large family. However, some individuals of the family are not available for genotype targeting this kind of data. And uh, um, uh, uh, in brief, a linkage analysis is to uh, identify the chromosome region that is responsible for a inheritable or Mendelian disease. And what we do is that we collect some gen uh, genetic markers on a large family. And uh, we identify the inheritance pattern for each marker and cut down the chromosome into regions. And we compare each inheritance against the disease model and identify the region that agrees with that disease. And, and then that region might be, hold, might be holding the uh, disease gene we are interested in. And here is just a, a simple example. And we have 10 individuals uh, of a four generation family. And let's say that uh, this, uh, this, uh, gray, this individual is, uh, is affected and the uh, uh, disease is a recessive disease. And in this pattern, we are, uh, we are more interested in, in, in the transmission patterns because where here is just an example that his grand, great parents the same view through, uh, through, uh, through different analysis to, to both of these paternal and maternal allele. And this is where we see this transmission pattern agrees with the recessive model. So we might be more interested in a chromosome region that corresponds to this transmission pattern. However, uh, in order to identify a inheritance pattern, uh, it could be hard because the search space is and imagine that in a family uh, of uh, this size, to them, two n uh, possible uh, inheritance, and it's possible the number of offsprings or non founders in, in a family. And you, you are considering in multi uh, losses, and this is now a time that by the number of uh, markers you have. So this will be some very super huge number, as you know. No computer can handle this kind of uh, complexity. However, there are different methods by, uh, by uh, making human properties of the, of the inheritance pattern to make it uh, run certain data sets. And the, the first uh, one is uh, the L statute. It makes use of the local property of the transmission pattern between uh, the two parents and children. So you can reduce that complexity exponential to number of loci. And another, another set of uh, algorithm is the uh, Leonard Green algorithm. It makes use of the uh, twin markers, <coughs> so you can reduce that, that kind of uh, to be only exponential to number of individuals. However, exponential to something. So this Ellison student could be applied a lot, but only with a few markers. Leonard Green can be applied on small families, but with many there has been many excellent improvements recently, which result in uh, many famous programs like Mobilian Hunter, uh, Simmore, and, uh, and, and recently there are also many, I think, uh, to me, uh, excellent improvements that are going to present about uh, uh, present today. And uh, approach, uh, uh, general follows the line of Leonard to use what is the most problem, why, why the uh, inherent markers fall across. And uh, given, given the, uh, uh, the, if you count the inherent pattern marker by marker, it can, the property uh, can generally be partitioned into, uh, given the descent graph, uh, what is probably of the genotype and the uh, dependence between different uh, descent graph between markers. And that dependence is generally uh, characteristized by uh, 
recombinations because there will be uh, recombination between meiosis basically at between uh, different markers. However, the distribution of inheritance patterns at one position only depends on its immediate preceding position. So, so an inheritance follows the Markov property. However, the, the given the Markov uh, the complexity is too high. You can imagine that the hidden states is too, 2 to the number of 2n. If the, you have uh, individuals in your family, are not available for phenotyping, then you will time the number of facts uh, to enumerate all you have for these individuals. And this will make the surfaces of your problem even huge. And uh, so in paradox, in a uh, typical we want to recruit as many people as possible because that will enough recombination to cut the chromosome down to enough to locate that, that disease gene and uh, on the other to have as much, uh, much dense as possible uh, genetic model. And in that case we'll have more resolution of identified recombination more confidence in the inferred inheritance on the other hand given so many markers and so many uh, family members uh, the additional burden is really huge and we're really afraid of these numbers. So, and uh, another issue is that, uh, like multi-generation family, usually, usually they're already dead, so they are not available for genotyping at all. And as far as they can uh, have a disease, they may age. And some individuals may simply do not want to participate, they do not want to get in genotyping. So all these, all these factors come together that we really get a small portion of the family genotype. This, this enumeration space could be really huge. We have possible uh, genomes of, a, of this another genotype. So we take another uh, that we want to simply look at a pair of individuals and their IBD first and then reconstruct the global IBD. The high density SNP marker, we, we as pair as IBD uh, could be uh, accurate. And this is once we, this is just once we have pair as IBD, we, we use uh, terminologies like IBD, IBS, because we, we now arrive at another uh, hidden marker model. And the hidden states is really small. We only have IBD1, IBD2, and IBS0, IBS1, IBS2. Because the individuals we only have their uh, genotype equal or partially share in one allele or not the same. Both alleles are different. And this is just an example on how given individuals how the IBD sharing could look like. We have 30,000 to uh, 50,000 markers. Uh, they are actually a sneak. Uh, this is on uh, Illumina. Uh, this is on 500 KCHAP. This is on FMHQ 6.0. But it gives you the idea that each dot in the case that at IBS 2, IBS 1, IBS 2. IBS. Uh, you can guess that which one actually corresponds to a corresponds to a first cousin pair. There are some observations we can have that for, for a first of all that they were share two ID because of the, it's a single linear first cousin because the uh, two I B sharing. So Actually, a sibling pair. This is the first cousin pair. So here is that for closely related individuals, IBD, then distant related 
with individual individuals. Actually, they are IBD sharing less often than uh, distant related relatives. However, we we want the probability in a systematic way and uh, inheritance generating function. And because we find that such probability is actually related to the inheritance path between two individuals. Here is just an example. An inheritance path is basically a path which connects two alleles to a common ancestral allele. Like here, this two allele is connected to its great grandfather's paternal allele. And this is an inheritance path. It is of length size. And why inheritance path is related to that probability, we can Observe that the longer that inheritance pass, the less probable that this two are IBD, and then the more often they will change from IBD to non-IBD. So that is the reason why this inheritance generating function is important. This is just an example how we might count the inheritance uh, pass between two values. There are actually four inheritance paths from the two grandparents, be paternal and maternal values. So there's four. Uh, and, uh, and we will no, uh, give a notation like between these two alleles, there's four inheritance paths of length five. And using that, we are going to quantify the marginal probability and uh, transition probability between two alleles. The marginal probability is basically just a, a 0.5 to the power of L. L is the length of the inheritance path. And the transition probability is 1 minus r to the power of f. r is the genetic distance between two markers. And uh, given, given, I mean, all inheritance paths, we can, we can uh, factor this uh, uh, transition probability in the form of the inheritance generating function. And once we have the, uh, we have the transition probability and margin probability for our uh, hidden marker model, we come up with this two status model. And uh, uh, there is some, uh, and this is what we already got, the, the transition probabilities. And there are some other probabilities we might want to take into account is because uh, uh, is the LD, uh, because between any two human beings, even they are unrelated strangers, they're somehow related by some very far ancestors, like two, 200 generations, 300 generations, no, 400 generations apart. So this actually results in a structure in human haplotypes. And though after we, we are relatively young uh, species, so after many generations of meiosis, we still observe those haplotype structure uh, within uh, shorter uh, segments of markers. So in order to absorb that background relativeness, we introduce another state. We basically split the naivety state into two and, 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 and the partition does transition probability accordingly. But there's a problem how to figure out the background IBD probability and I will talk about this later. And uh, now we come up with this full model of and to model the pedigree IBD and the uh, uh, background option LD. And I, we use two data sets to uh, validate our method. The first one is in is uh, FMetric 0 uh, array a SNP set on three very large families, 40 to 50 um, members. However, between these three families, only uh, seven, eleven individuals are genotyped in each family. So uh, much of the families are not genotyped. The missing rate is pretty high, so it's almost three percent. The typing error is also uh, pretty high, it's two percent, and this is of low quality. We want to use this because of where it also also shows this of our um, algorithm. The second data set. Uh, it's of higher quality. It's a Lumina 500K chip. The missing rate and error rate is rather low. And we have 112 nuclear families of two. And this, the good of this data set is that we have both current 
as children do not have. So everybody in the family is doing not have. However, we just pretend that the parents are not doing not have. By using the full data set, we can use Mendelian law to the recombination positions. And once we and we ask the genotype of the parents, and we use our current method, a compare accuracy of the recombination positions inferred by our method with the model. And that will show how accurate our algorithm is actually is. The first category is uh, structures we have. This is the, uh, the first pedigree. It only has uh, seven individuals genotyped. However, we just uh, ignore some uh, family members that is not relevant here. And uh, they are either not genotyped, they're deceased, and uh, none of the genotyped individual, uh, the inheritance will go through this in, these members. So we simply ignore all these members and leave with a more succinct representation of the pedigree. And these are the other two pedigrees. Are, uh, the size is relatively grow. And the first is the efficiency of uh, our algorithm compared with Malin. Because our algorithm is, uh, uh, in theory, is uh, to the number of marker and the quadratic to the number of individuals. So in this case, on family one, Malin is faster than our algorithm. But family two and family three is 10 times and then 100 times slower than. And we run it as algorithm, uh, run it, uh, our program on it. Six uh, gigabyte memory machine, and in some cases, Malin will run out of memory. Your space is so huge, and it cannot uh, obtain a result in categories because of the once the family size goes large, and the pattern, the enumeration space is too huge. And, and X Y is uh, is, a, is the accuracy. This one shows. Uh, the accuracy for different uh, relative pairs on family one, family two, and family three. We can see on close related pairs, like siblings to different, uh, more distant related pairs, our program consistently uh, achieved an accuracy below 1%. And compared with Malin on family one, we can, see, we can observe that uh, uh, our, our program is especially better than Malin once. Uh, uh, once these two relatives are not connected by genotyped relatives, uh, genotyped family members, like those distant related individuals, like the siblings, while parents are not genotyped, in these situations, uh, our program will achieve better accuracy uh, than Malin. And this is the second data set we have. And like I said, uh, we have both parents and children genotyped, but we just uh, pretend that they are, they are not genotyped and apply our method. We use the Menin law first to infer the recombination positions. And in total, the Mendelian law used like 857 recombination positions. And this method, because uh, both of these parents are reported to be uh, not related and they are just strangers. Uh, so it is good data sets. We can estimate the uh, population LD level in a human population. So how do we not know how, how two strangers might be related uh, just randomly in the population? So we, can, we, we just set such related to be 100, 200, 300, 400 miles as apart. We think they are like that many generations apart. And by using different parameters, we can, we, the, the program shows different uh, the sensitivity and specificity. So once you, 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 you set the, uh, their, their relatedness to, to be really distant, so most of the IBD sharing will be inferred to be actually sharing. You have really high <coughs> positive, false positive, but you have relatively low false negative rate. And this is uh, an example shows uh, this is a uh, this which summarizes the uh, the back population IBD in this sibling pair families and uh, not related and this given that we have observed that for uh, for for the average number of uh, category IBD sharing is uh, this. 
long uh, population I've been sharing is this long. They are pretty different. However, they still have quite mixed uh, tails. So we make mistakes during in, uh, within this portion. And, uh, and finally, I will showcase the And on chromosome 22, based on pattern, we can cut the chromosome to six regions. And, and uh, each region is a different kind of pattern. If you know that the disease, like the first one, actually match the dominant model, so we can say, we can search scope saying that actually uh, this region is in. So, however, both the study of both of these is still going, going on. We are still expecting uh, you, our collaborators. And this is finally the result. And I uh, thank all, uh, many of our uh, uh, helping and participating in this. Uh, uh, we are actually uh, uh, a uh, from Case Western Reserve University, and Mark uh, Jinli is our leader, and uh, this program is uh, uh, implemented by me and uh, Shaolin, who is also so here. To I would especially thank our collaborators uh, from the Feng uh, Chu uh, for providing the uh, FMX 6.0 on large uh, families. Also, from the NIH for providing the luminous uh, on nuclear families. The study of both of these family, I would definitely thank uh, ISMB for, uh, for me travel support, and it was out of which it is possible for me to present here. And I, I just want to say thank you so much. And uh, that's it. I'm, I'm ready for questions. <laughs> Very interesting work. I have a question. When you model the inheritance path, right, you show there there's four possible uh, inheritance paths in poll you show. I wonder when you do the modeling, do you consider the dependency or correlation between those paths? Because some part of the path may be shared. Um. They're not independent paths. So I wonder how do you model that in your Okay. I see a person. This is actually a very good question. These paths are not actually independent. But this is just an approximation given that the mark interval distance are very And each path, they are not exactly the same. So we can model the transition probability in that way. These paths are actually not independent, but, but it's efficient to model that. Uh, Inheritance generate function in that way. And uh, have you looked at that? Uh, uh, if you do that way, that I mean, how closely uh, the the gap is the uh, the actual probability? Uh, I think on the family structures I have, I believe the the difference is very minimal. There is no. Much, not much difference. Um, you have an inheritance generating function. Uh, do you see any other applications of identity by descent, what you have done here? Uh, the generative function is actually inspired by the past counting uh, algorithm for identity states or kinship coefficient calculation. And uh, this is invented like 100 years ago. And it has a, a broad application in, in genetic studies. It's, uh, your, does your in, specific function, yeah, it has have you envisioned anything else? Have you seen any other future work that you think will come out of this in regards to the function that you wrote down? Uh, in because the, generate functions are a very, very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. And now that you have one, you should really apply it. Yeah, this is a good, very good point. I haven't thought of any other than uh, generating the marginal or transition probability 
for uh, hidden mark model, but I think there will be potential applications available, especially in the analysis of complex families. We can relate all the information between a pair of individuals using the generating function. So that will potentially reduce the uh, complexity for uh, a series of problems that uh, focus on uh, the inheritance or descent graph in a family with many individuals. I believe that that will have applications in these